Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to go ahead and put a nice engraving on this acacia cutting board with the Thunderbolt. I'm going to show you how to use the autofocus. We're going to go ahead and use the camera as well. And before you know it, we're going to have a beautiful design on this cutting board ready for our customer. Let's go check it out. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to down arrow to make sure that we've got plenty of room for our head to come over the board before we autofocus. So we've dropped the Z table. We're going to now go ahead and down arrow to bring the uh, laser head over the cutting board. Then we're going to come up here to autofocus. We're going to touch on autofocus. And it's going to just say, uh, we'll perform a Z axis. Is that OK to do it? Make sure everything's out of the way. We're going to say OK. And it's going to come up. It's going to push in the plunger. It's going to step back down a little bit. And at this point, we're uh, focused. Now, this is a requirement. If you're going to use the camera, you absolutely have to use the autofocus because it's got to have a consistent distance from the top of your material to the camera lens. So just remember, if you're going to use the camera, it has to be autofocused. And at this point, we're ready to go. We can go ahead. I'm going to pull this laser head out of the way so we can go ahead and close the lid and update the camera display in Lightburn and we'll get it all set up there. Okay, so what we've done, we've opened up Lightburn here, we've gone to the camera control tab, we've gone and turned on our camera. This assumes you've already calibrated it. We're gonna select Update Overlay. I've pulled the gantry out of the way. Uh, I like to go ahead and fade it. Uh, to me, it, you can just see things a lot better. I go back and forth, you can see the the layer colors a little better when it's lighter, but then you can kind of see where you're at. Uh, so I go back and forth. And so what I normally do is I will draw a rectangle, just a, a rectangle in my uh, black layer. Um, that's going to be set to line. The output's going to be off. This is just an indication so I can center my graphic. But for right now, I'm going to leave it on because what we're going to do is we're going to frame, we're going to select that layer and frame it. So normally what I'll do is um, I'll put the cutting board in there. I'll uh, just uh, size a rectangle to the edge of the cutting board. I'll make sure uh, if I need to move the cutting board at all, I'll keep updating the, updating the overlay as I move the board to make sure that we've got a nice flat uh, top on here so our rectangle matches our board and at this point I can go ahead and frame it and if I frame it at this point we can go ahead and watch okay at this point I've got the uh, cutting board square with the gantry and to, to make sure that that's true I just want to go ahead and frame this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select my black layer. I'm going to make sure that my black layer is on, which it is. I've selected my layer and I'm going to go ahead and say frame. And when I select the frame button, you're going to see that that will go around the perimeter of the cutting board. And that ensures that we've got everything set up properly. Look like it's framed great and it looks like we're ready to go. So now if I wanted to just have a sanity check, I could go ahead and turn my frame or my black layer off, uh, select my engrave layer and frame it. And it will also outline kind of where that's going to go. This is just a double check, a sanity check on uh, if it's uh, going to go where it needs to. And at this point, we're ready to go ahead and engrave it. So you can see it's pretty easy to go ahead and get these lined up and get the engraving going. Um, the secret, in my opinion, is putting this black 
frame layer around it and basically using your camera to make sure that that cutting board follows this black line. And that way, uh, you know that we're going to be equally spaced when we go ahead and engrave this uh, artwork. Okay, at this point, we're going to go ahead and um, turn our frame layer off, make sure that our settings are correct. Again, your settings might uh, change. I'm still kind of testing things on this bolt just to see what we can get away with. So we're going to engrave it at 700 millimeters a second at 70% power at 400 lines per inch. And it's in focus and we're going to see what it looks like. Um, so we're going to go ahead and send it. And we can just say cutting board one. When it hits a controller, you'll hit hear it beep. And uh, one of the things I'll go ahead and mention right now, um, if you're using a PC, you only need one cable from your uh, from the bolt to your PC, um, where before you needed two. Now, if you're using a Mac, you're still going to need two cables, one for the uh, that controls the laser and one that controls the camera. But if you're operating a PC, you only need one USB cable. Okay, we've got our design that's showed up over here. We've got our speed and our power. And if we just want to make sure everything's the way it should be, we're going to go ahead and hit frame. That will go ahead and outline it. And at this point, we can go ahead and hit the start button right here and get the job going. Now you notice that it's come over here and nothing's happened and that's because I've got about a 12 to a 15 second delay to let the fan ramp up before this engrave starts. Okay, let's take a look at this controller right quick while we've got the noise uh, down a little bit. Um, the estimate on in Lightburn was 12 minutes and 29 seconds. The actual runtime was about 13 minutes and 6 seconds, so not too far off. Uh, you can see this is your status, so this will be green as it goes along. When it's all done, it'll turn yellow. This gives you your uh, file name your power, your speed, and uh, it gives you everything that you need to know. I'm going to do a video on the controller, on all the functions of the controller, but uh, this has got some really nice features. You can see that we've got home, manual, file, menu, autofocus, origin, and frame. And then you've got all these buttons down here. Uh, one thing I really like about this controller is I can put it into manual and unlock it and I can uh, do all kinds of uh, fine adjustments without changing anything. I can go from 100 millimeters a second just driving it around and the flip of a button I can go to 10 millimeters so you can do some um, fine adjustment and then go back to 100 millimeters and you can set those values yourself. Those are not predetermined. So these, this is kind of your step, um, your incremental menu here for small movements, and then you have these buttons down here for your uh, larger movements. And it's really kind of handy once you get uh, used to how it works. Well, there you have it. We've engraved one side at 700 millimeters a second, then I did on the back side at 400 millimeters a second. The 700 millimeter a second took about 13 minutes, the 400 millimeter side took about 19 minutes, so there's 
six minutes difference uh, between these two engraves and the, you can really not tell a whole lot of difference. One's a little bit deeper than the other, but the bottom line is this machine can engrave at 700 millimeters per second all day long. And so I wanted to show you how the autofocus works, how the camera works, a little bit about that, a glimpse of the controller and what it looks like. And I hope you enjoyed the content today. If you do, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I'd sure appreciate you doing that. And if you have the ability, hit that thanks button and contribute to the channel. It's those contributions that are making all this worthwhile. And I really appreciate those who contribute. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.